In this video, we're going to look at probably the best, most comprehensive, highest quality data for Great Britain from Ordnance Survey. It's called OS Open ZoomStack. It's an open data product and it covers all of Great Britain. Just remember that Ordnance Survey covers all of Great Britain, but not Northern Ireland. OS is the mapping agency for Great Britain. So all the links for the data are in the description of the video. You go to the OS ZoomStack page and in QGIS, which I'm using, I'm going to download the Geo package. So I've already downloaded this. It's quite large, a few gigabytes, but it works perfectly. So we'll come back and look at other stuff in a minute. But right now, we're going to look at the folder where I downloaded and unzipped this Geo package. And unzipped, it's 12 gigabytes, which seems enormous, but it works flawlessly. So let's take a look at adding it. You can do it via the data source manager button. Go to vector and click on browse. Some people add data that way. But in this case, and most times I'm adding data, I just drag and drop it into the map canvas. And then you can see all the layers that ZoomStack contains. You could just select one and then add it, but I'm going to add them all. And notice in the list, there's there's sometimes duplicate layers like district buildings and local buildings. Local buildings are just more detailed buildings that you might want to turn on at a very local level, whereas district buildings are less accurately digitized and it's the kind of file you would have if you're more zoomed out. We'll look at that in a minute though. For now, I'll click add layers and they're all going to add. It will take a few moments depending on the power of your computer. What I would usually do at this stage though, to stop them all loading up all the time, I'll click on the I button and I'll just hide all layers. So let me turn on local buildings and I'm going to zoom in here to Inverness in the north of Scotland, which is also where I'm from. Now this is the district. So this is a local buildings layer. So let's go to a local area here and also turn on the district buildings. And you can see the difference. The district buildings are just less accurately digitized. And this is the kind of thing you would use if you're more zoomed out. So at this level, you don't really see much difference. But when you zoom in, these just look a little bit coarse. So we'll want to use the local buildings. Now everything looks a bit ugly at the moment because there's no, there's no style in it. But let's just have a look. We've got railway lines, sorry, railway stations. Zoom out there. We've got lots of other things. We've got place names, all sorts of things. Place names and names for features. We've also got contours, boundaries, all sorts of things. You can see in the names of what we've got. Now, the thing is, when you've got this data, it's really great, but what you'll really want to do is style it. You can style it yourself, which can take a while, or you can use some of the default Ordnance Survey style sheets that they've provided. The link for this is also in the description. They also provide the correct layer order. So this is the order your layers should be in if you want it to be perfectly displayed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my other screen and I'm going to layer my zoom stack in that way. So all I'll do is I'll take the names one here and I'll highlight it and I'll left click and drag and drop it above. So after names, they want airports. So what I'll do is I'll just pause the video as I do this and I'll unpause it after I've reordered them properly in line with Ordnance Survey's layer order. Now let's see if I've reordered these correctly. We should have names, airports, railway stations, ETL, which is electricity transmission lines, boundaries, rail, roads, regional and national. So it should be roads, national and then regional. Local roads, water lines, foreshore, surface water, local buildings, district buildings, contour, woodland, green space sites, urban areas, national parks and land. So I've got the order correct, which is great. But if I click the I button and show all layers, we just get this ugly mess of data and that's not what we want. So we can apply the styles. Let me just turn all the layers off so we don't have that mess on screen. Now on the Ordnance Survey, zoom stack page that I'm looking at, we do have style sheets for different software. If I go to geo package, 
we can see there's one for QML style sheets for QGIS. There's also ones for Esri software there. But I'll click on QML. That's what we're looking for. And there's a number of different styles. We've got outdoor style, road style. So let's take the outdoor style. Will we try that one? Yeah, let's try that one. And then we can see all the different QML files there. And that's a style file. It's just a text file which tells QGIS how to style a layer. So what I'm going to do is I just go back to the geo package folder, go back to style sheets, and this could be a bit confusing. So I'm going back to style sheets. The reason being is I can just click on code and then download the zip file for all this and have it on my computer. So I'll download the zip, I'll unzip it, and then I'll show you inside the folder. Okay, so I downloaded that folder from the GitHub page that OS provided, and I'm going to go into the geo package and then the QML folder. And then I think I was going to use the road style or outdoor. Let's just use the road style. And we see all these QML files here. Now we need to apply these to the individual layers with the same name. And that will then style the layers automatically. So we don't need to do it all. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. The key thing to remember here is a QML file is just a small text file that tells QGIS how to style a layer and how we apply it to individual layers. I'll show you this now. So what I want to do is I want to highlight the layer I want to apply the style to. In this case, we'll start at the top, double click on names. The layer properties will pop up and no matter which section you're in, you should see a style button towards the bottom. And then if I click on it, I can load the style. So I'll click on load style and then I'll navigate to the folder where my QML style files are located. And I do that once the database styles manager pops up, I just click on this little browse button and then I'll find where the QML files are on my computer. Okay, I'm in that folder now and I need to find the names QML file. I found it, I'll click open. I'll click load style. All the styles come up and I'll click okay. And I'll turn it on. And what we see, we just see names at this stage but that's fine. That's what's supposed to happen. It's just names. Now I'm going to repeat this for airports. I'll click on style, load style, click the browse button, and this is going to be airports. And I'll click open, load style and okay. Often you won't see them until you zoom in far enough. And sometimes weird things happen, but I'll turn this one on and we should be able to see an airport symbol and we do. So I'm going to repeat this process now for all layers, but I'll pause it while I do that. It'll only take a few minutes. It's a little bit tedious the first time you do it, but you do it once, then you save your project and then you've got a fantastic OS base map saved in your computer. So let me do that now. I'm about halfway into applying the styles now and you can see that things are taking shape. It will take you maybe five minutes to do this the first time. But like I said, once you do it, you save your project and you've got it all set up and you can open it up at any other time. So I'll just do a couple more while you're looking. I'll turn on surface water, I'll double click it. I go to style, load style, and this is going to be surface water. So I'll click open, load style, and okay. And one thing I'll usually do here is I'll change the background color in QGIS to match the water color. So to do that, I'll go to project properties. And then in general, I'll click on the drop down for the background color here, and I'll, cho I'll choose pick color. And I'm just going to pick the color using the color picker. The color itself is actually D5 EFF8, but the color picker should work. Click OK and apply and okay. That'll change the background, but of course, when you turn the land on, it won't be blue behind the land. So I'll turn the land on, I'll double click land, I'll click style, I'll load the style for land, I'll click open, load style, and okay. And I'll pause the video again whilst I finish adding the styles for the other layers. Almost finished, I'm just applying the style to the National Parks layer, click open, 
load style and okay now we've got all the layers styled you'll notice as well when you style them you'll often see the layers expand here on the left to show the different styles for different categories within layers you'll also see if you look closely in the layers panel on the left that some of the text is black and some of it is kind of grayed out the reason for that is these styles include some scale dependent rendering which means features will only appear in some cases as you zoom in so i've zoomed in here and we see the contours we see the minor roads we see buildings we see roundabouts but if i zoom out we don't see all the layers all the time when we zoom out far enough like this only some features are visible otherwise the map would be overwhelming and now as i scroll down throughout great britain we can see how this works so if I zoom into Sheffield, where I am, we start to see neighborhood names as we zoom in. We start to see different features like the tram track, individual buildings. If I zoom into say the University of Sheffield, we can see the individual buildings there. We see individual features like Sheffield Children's Hospital. If I go to the sites section, you can see this is now on and we can turn sites on and off. But if I zoom out a bit, if I zoom out far enough on the left hand side the sites layer goes gray because it's turned off so i'll zoom out a bit more and we'll just go down to london and if i use a zoom tool to zoom in a couple of times let's go to fairly central london it'll take a second or two to redraw let's zoom in a bit more and one more zoom so there we are in central London and uh, we've got a really nice ordnance survey styled base map. We can see all the key features, we can see all the tube stations, all the rail stations and we can turn on and off anything we want to. But the really important thing to do is after you've styled your project once and you've got the layers in the right order, just go to project and save as and save this project so that you can open it any time. I'll do that now. While I pause the video, I've navigated to the folder where I want to save this. I'll just call this one OS Zoom Stack 2024. And I can open this up anytime. So if I go to save, and then I'm going to close this project, well, I'll just click on new project to have a blank canvas. Now, this time, <coughs> I'll go to open the project straight to my folder, click on open. And I don't have any of that messing about trying to style layers and so on. <clears throat> now, of course, if I wanted a more basic map, I can choose whatever features I want to have on or off. If I don't want, for example, let me go to green space. If I want the parks off, I can turn them on or off. If I don't want buildings on, I could do that so I can just see the roads more clearly. If I want a really localized map with street names if I zoom in the street names will come on now you might be wondering how is all this happening well it's because of these clever style files that the lovely people at Ordnance Survey have created and if I go to say names double click the layer what we'll see is the symbology is based on rules for different features so the names layer has place names for like capitals or cities but it's also got names of things like parks motorway junctions national parks and so on and these are set to come on at different scales so that's the way that works if i go to the rendering section there's also this thing called scale dependent visibility and that means things will turn on and off at different scales so there's a minimum and maximum scale at which things will appear so if i'm zoomed right in things will appear but if i'm zoomed out to more than one to five million the layer won't appear at all so there's 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 rendering controlling which features actually show at all and then in symbology within individual layers things are set to come on and off at different scales so that is how these layers work and that's why when you zoom out some of them aren't on like district buildings they'll come on once i zoom out far enough and local buildings will, will turn off 
and takes a little bit of getting used to. But of course, once you've done that, if I decide I want my buildings to be a slightly different color, I can, of course, change it to whatever I want. Now, if I do that to blue, which is gonna look horrific, let's do it to dark and click apply and make the outline like that. We can do that and then we decide, okay, that looks terrible. What should we do? Well, I'll double click on it. I can go to style and I can load up the local building style again and just reset it to what it was. Open, load style and okay. So that's the way it works. It's really, really useful. And then you can add, you can include this as your background mapping and whatever you want. And remember that I applied one particular style here, but in the download, we have different style sheets. We've got the light style, the night style, the outdoor style, the road style, and you can read all the information there about the different ones, including the color vision deficiency styles, which are really useful to make your maps more accessible. Of course, don't forget the layer order. If you have the layer order wrong, for example, you have them all like this, but you had land on top, then it's gonna look really weird and wrong. So just remember, layer, or layer order is super important. But once you've got it, you wanna do a map of anywhere in Great Britain. Let's go to Liverpool for the final piece of this video. I'll zoom in. Let's go into center of Liverpool here. And I will just go to project, import, export, and I'm gonna export this map to an image. Let's make it 600 DPI. I'll click save, and then I'm gonna open it separately in uh, image viewer so you can see the final image. Okay, so I'm going to save this as Liverpool Zoom Stack example and click on save. It's going to export that to a really high resolution image. And then once it does, I'll open that on screen in a moment. So it's finished saving. There's the image in Windows Photo Viewer. If I view it at, that's at 13% scale at the moment. If I view this image, at 100%, we can see it's a high quality image and we get all the layers that are on at the scale that we exported at. The last thing to say to end the video is that all this data is open data and you can use it under the open government license. If I click on that link, you'll see that you're free to pretty much do anything with it, you can exploit the information commercially. So if you're a commercial company, you can use it, you can combine it with other information, you can do all those things. And it's a very flexible license. You just need to be sure to follow the conditions of the license and make sure that anytime you use it, you must put the following statement on your map and any other ones that are required in the download. But you'll see all that information on the OS website as well. So that is a little tour of OS Zoomstack, a really great product for base mapping with different styles, really high quality data for the whole of the UK. And the great thing about it is you can also use it just to have one layer. Like if you just want buildings, you could just download it just for the buildings. All the different layers can be used separately. All the styles are there. And it's just a really fantastic product that has taken mapping local areas across the UK to a new level.